This is Grow With The Bros, hosted by Ryan and Ken Parsons, founders of the Brothers That Just Do Gutters. Welcome to another episode of Bro Brainstorm. We've made every mistake in the book so you don't have to. Our time to evolve as business owners is now. Let's grow together. Welcome to another episode of Grow With The Bros. Today, we're going to talk about why we think you should add that truck. If you're in a service-based business, we think you should add a truck. All right? So we're going we're gonna to just dive right in. And, uh, you know, in the gutter business, how many people are typically on a truck? Two. There's usually a driver and a passenger. Uh, some people have had uh, – it depends on how you run your business too. I mean, a lot of guys are pulling trailers. Uh, they're they're um, – maybe have a, you know, a crew cab or something. Uh, But for our our business model, we're typically two men in a truck. Yeah. And I I know people that have tree companies and, you know, they might have one of those extended cabs and they've got, you know, three or four guys on a crew. So typically a truck has at least one guy that can lead, that he can go there, he can do the entire job and they typically have somebody with them that could either assist them or they're equal in experience. So you typically have at least one person that can do the entire job successfully with with somebody else that can assist them and keep things safe. When you're dealing with ladders or anything like that, um, we we, we advise it's always great to have at least another person there. So um, third guy on a gutter truck, sometimes, you know, when you're training and you're trying to, you know, like we're talking about today, get to that next truck. Uh, sometimes three guys can work. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you can't really make those hours uh, add up. You know, if you're going to do a bunch of cleanings or some repairs, having three guys, it's hard to make a lot of money. If you're doing bigger jobs like gutters and guards and or copper, it's real easy to uh, make that third person. But that's typically what we're looking at in our industry. And I think most the time, anytime I've had plumbers come to my house, it's typically a one man operation or possibly two, depending on the project. I think for most trades you're seeing in the service based two man crews. Do you agree? I agree. You know, it really depends on the skill set and the type of jobs that you're sending these guys out to, too, to complete. So, you know, I think a lot of strategy is involved in that as well. Yep. So typically, I mean, if we think back to when you started, Ken, the one truck, um, I mean, we just described what we have as, as, you know, in a crew, but typically it's the owner in the truck with a helper, correct? A helper or somebody that you've trained over the course of time uh, to, you know, get to a certain level of skill uh, to aid you. Uh, But that's typically what an owner, installer, operator uh, scenario uh, would look like. Yeah. And one of the, one of the questions that we get a lot, and, and I think everybody kind of that, that has a business and tends to grow and then you might get beat up a little bit and decide, you know what, I'm just going to keep doing it myself with the one truck. But one of the biggest questions, and we've actually gotten this from franchisees early on is like, well, I know I got to get to a second truck with a machine and all that, but is there an in-between? What if I just get a pickup truck? What's your, what's your answer to that? Well, it really has to start with the beginning. The beginning is marketing and who you're marketing to to get to that second truck. And, you know, if you're, if you're doing a half step, like a lot of guys um, I've heard of doing, and I've done it myself, uh, is you get the box truck with the gutter machine and then you think, well, instead of getting that five, $6,000 that it costs in equipment to outfit a truck and a $10,000 gutter machine or whatever you get, used one, whatever, uh, and then buying another truck, which is another monthly expense. And then you need to have two bodies in that truck, which is four now that you're managing, uh, plus possibly yourself still going out on a truck probably at that point. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot more overhead that you're, you're adding. And if you're not efficient, <laughs> you could have money coming in just as fast as going out, you know, so being efficient and having systems in place is also going to play into that. Uh, but the half step, yes. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're going after a lot of uh, 
there's a lot of work out there that can be done. You can have, you can hire four guys and have two guys going out in a pickup truck. What does that look like? It might look like your, uh, your other truck with the gutter machine is going out to the job and, and running off some gutters and doing a drop off for those guys in the pickup truck so that they have everything on that truck that they need. Obviously they don't have a machine. And then the other guys go down the street and go do their jobs for the day. Hmm. Uh, there's many different strategies and ways that you can slice it and dice it. Can it be done? Yes. Can it be done? But it has to, there's a lot of efficiencies that you have to consider and do to make it so that it's profitable. You know, yeah. being, can it be done? Yeah. Anything can be done, but can it be done profitably is a whole nother uh, question. Uh, it can be, uh, but for the amount of uh, time and effort that you're going to be putting into that, uh, I don't know. I, I always think that the work is out there. Why not just get the truck, get the other machine and go for it. And, you know, I've always heard from guys that have done the half step that when in retrospect, they look back and they wish they actually got the machine and the, and just spent the money on the truck and got it because the work is out there. So I'd say for us at this point, we, 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 we answer with an absolute no. When somebody uh, says, you know what? I think I'm just going to get a pickup truck. Uh, I've got one truck now. I'm going to go to a pickup truck. And we're, we're like, we absolutely don't think that's the best move. Um, you know, for our business model, it might work for yours. If you're doing primarily cleanings and repairs, yeah, it might work for your business model. Um, but, you know, we definitely um, don't think that that's, that's the best option uh, out there. You just got to go big or, or, or stay small. Uh, is what it is really what it comes down to. You mean go big or go home? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean seriously, and that's that's it. I mean, so in between two trucks, this is really there's, I and everyone I've met, I don't care what service based industry you are in. Everyone I've met, it's the same story. Going from one to two crews is super painful. And a lot of times you don't necessarily make more money. And when I say that, you might do more in revenue. But if you're an owner operator and you're used to making a certain amount of money, adding that second truck typically doesn't increase that money that you're taking home. It's a step. It's a yeah, step. No, the way that you make more money, though, at, you should be able to make money in this business at one truck, at two trucks, three trucks, and beyond. Uh, and it really comes down to how organized and disciplined and efficient you are. And then also, you know, what kind of ongoing training that you're providing so that there isn't knowledge gaps within your team. That's really a huge issue that I see is the knowledge gaps between skill levels. When people start to scale, they start to lose control uh, of things because they don't have uh, the right things in place for making sure that people are being held accountable uh, good communication as well through accountability, through meeting and training uh, and, and ongoing. And that's stuff that has to be repeated every day of the week. And so, if you don't have that structure in place first and operating your business as if it is a multi-million dollar business right from the outset, it it's going to be super painful to grow to the second yeah. and third truck and beyond. Super painful. And I, I really, if you don't plan on having five trucks, don't try and have two. That's what, I mean, that's what I'm going to say. If you don't plan on scaling your business to something serious, it's not worth it. You know, in my opinion, it's very, very painful to go from one to two to three. And we're going to talk later why it gets easier after that. But if that is not in your heart or you're not motivated for that, um, most likely most people end up going to two and it's too hard and they go back down to one when they should have just pressed on and gotten to the third. So I, I look at it like this. Um, a lot of people like, you know, if you've got children, you'll, you'll appreciate this analogy. And I believe our business is very much the same way. A lot of us, just like Ken, you started out as an owner operator and you were a baby. You, you crawled. You had to learn things the hard way. It wasn't easy. And then you started to get it down. It's just like a kid. You know, you, 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 you start when you crawl and then you walk badly. Right now I've got a one-year-old who's walking badly, but he's walking and, and we're encouraging him. It's amazing. And then you get to the point, I've got a 10-year-old. You know, he can do almost everything, you know, he's, and then on. And I believe that that's kind of like the owner-operator. They've gotten their one truck so good and efficient 
that nobody can do it like them. And to think about adding a truck and going back to that child stage, and now where you're nurturing again and they're making mistakes, it's too painful for them. But guess what? These kids do grow up, you know, and it doesn't have to be painful because eventually you can, you don't have to start at that baby level. And I really do feel like that's where people get stuck is in the comparison. And I remember, Ken, when you used to, when you got off a truck and you were doing the scheduling, you would look at a job and be like, I can do that job in 45 minutes. Let's give the guys an hour and 15. Meanwhile, it would take them two or three. And it was very discouraging. And a lot of people see that and they go, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm going back out there. No one does it like me. So I would say going the in between one and two trucks is definitely painful. There's definitely a lot of knee jerk reaction of let's just go back to the way it was. Life was simpler. I didn't have people calling out and screwing out up my day. I was in charge, right? Correct. Sorry. Yeah. I had to. But uh, yeah, so yes, all that is uh, true. So. so when we're going from the one to two, like you just started to touch on this, like it's not about buying a truck. You know, some people have money and their business is profitable and they can go get a truck. It's not about necessarily having that truck. There's a lot more that goes into getting to a second crew, correct? So what are some of the things that people could be working on? Well, a lot of the things that you need to work on before you're doing that is you really have to have a good uh, system for training people in place because when I was an owner, installer, operator, it really, you know, if I got somebody in there that was pretty green, it literally would take a year or more to get them to be a decent assistant. And it's just because when you're the owner and solar operator, you don't have time to sit on a job and hear, this is how you cut a downspout and measure it and put it together. This is how you do an inside corner. It's not like you have a training display that you can just, you know, have time to sit there and, you know, teach guys how to do this, like in the classroom at school. Uh, you're going out there and you're running hard. You're running hard after estimates. You're running hard after, like you said earlier, uh, stock and trucks, keeping, tr you know, we barely have time to even check the oil in our trucks, let alone get them serviced properly. And then, you know, all kinds of other things happen. Uh, you don't, the time, the time goes by so fast and just in a day that you don't have the time that it, it, it takes to properly train somebody where, when you have a system in place that is created for a clear job description, clear pathway for somebody to go from zero to apprentice in one month, now now I can now I'm now I can scale uh, faster. So now I have somebody that's worth something to the company within a month of having them there, as opposed to a year or even longer. Um, you know, especially with a green guy, and and then also you know the with all different types of levels, you can get people in there um, that have their own system and their own way of doing things. So hiring people with the experience, they might come to the table with experience, but not do it quite the way that you want it to be done. Uh, so, you know, having uh, ways to communicate, ways to meet and uh, repetition within that training process is going to help go from one to two to three trucks and beyond. I, I think that's the ground. You know, people always say, well, how do I scale my business? How do I get my landscapers to do it this way or my uh, plumbers to do it that way? It's, it really, you know, you, you can buy as many trucks and as many materials and many as you can and hire as many guys as you can, but it's just going to be organized chaos if you don't have the infrastructure prepared ahead of time to be able to hold people accountable and then give them a clear pathway to success. Um, yeah. So that's going to be a, that's going to be a number one thing. I think that people really need to make sure that they have in place is um, a system to aid your growth. Yeah. And this is where it gets tough for us when we, you know, it's awesome. And, and we're, we, we have such a, um, a place of privilege to be reached out to by many business owners that own different trades and everything. And they're like, tell me how to get to two or three trucks. And it's painful because I, to give them that advice, it's, 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 there's a few easy things that we're going to tell you today that you need in place. 
But as much as it's easy to say, it's been 10 or 15 years of our lives of building manuals and systems. And to get Ken off a truck, we had to literally think of every step that somebody, like as soon as Ken's not there, what things are, are guys going to forget? Are they going to know to load uh, and stock the truck? How do they know? And we had to write all that. And that's kind of why, you know, a lot of times we talk about, you know, buying a franchise. And if you're even in the gutter business, it still makes sense to buy a franchise if you want to scale because so much of this stuff to get to that second, third, fifth, 10th truck, it's already been done. Um, so when somebody's asking, how do I do that? Here's the easiest thing I can tell you. And then you've got to go fill in all the hard work is you need one more lead than you have trucks. So if you have one truck, you need two guys that are capable of running a truck. And a lot of times in the beginning, that's the owner, you know, and then that's his helper. So you've got to get that guy so good that you can buy a second truck and now the owner is on one and the, and the uh, other guy's running his other one. And then eventually get the owner off of one. Uh, so, but all that, it's easy to say, but to do all that, the amount of training, investment, marketing, all the things that go into that, I don't want to minimize. But that is kind of a little bit of the formula. If you want a formula, you need more leads than you have trucks if you ever want to add trucks. Simple as that yeah, and as hard as that. There's a mindset. There's a certain mindset too that you need to hire within your business for people to want to do that. And they have to be, you have to have a, hire a guy that's hungry enough to want to do that. If this guy is a young single guy, and yeah, he works hard and stuff, but he doesn't have any motivation because he wants to get home at like three or four o'clock in the afternoon because he wants to hang out with his friends or his girlfriend or go party or whatever he does at uh, a young age. Uh, you know, so, and, and not all of them are like, not all guys are like that. Some guys are uh, more, more responsible than others, but really, um, and we talked that about responsibility in our last podcast with Peter Wando. That's a huge thing. You know, when you hire somebody, if you're not hiring talent into your business and you're just hiring a body to hand you stuff, then you're, it's going to be very tough. At. So having one more lead than you have trucks allows you to be able to scale. Because if I have a leader, at least I can hire a helper to help that person. And if I can yep. remove myself out of the process of being in the installation process and wearing that tool belt, and I can start helping these guys on site, training these apprentices or, or green guys that are helping my leads. That's where I can start building momentum to scale up um, and to get more people in the door to be able to expand to more trucks. Um, that's the way to do it. But I got to be willing to make the investment upfront and leader quality individual in there that has a hunger to do these things and wants to actually rip that responsibility away from me as the leader. You know, that's the type of person I need that says, Hey Ken, listen, you don't have to worry about ordering the material. I got it. I, I know, I know the program. I know where all of it exists. I can take care of it. And you know, you don't just hand it over to somebody. Obviously you want to, you know, see if they can really do it and they do it right. And then once you feel that they uh, are capable of doing it, then yes, then you can hand that off to them. But that's what it's all about. It's all being uh, replaceable to be promotable. And I have to think that way as well as an owner. If I'm wearing the tool belt, how can I replace myself? And once I start thinking with that kind of a mentality um, and I start hiring people that have talent uh, then and leadership ability, then business starts to get easier and more enjoyable. But when I have guys there that don't have those qualities, but I'm expecting them to be able to do something like that, or I hand it off to a person like that, it's going to fall flat on its face. And I did that for years, yep. uh, trying to hire guys that, and there's a lot of guys out there that have great skill, but don't make great leaders. And they're not going to be able to help you, especially if you're trying to scale in the beginning. You need to have the full package. So, I mean, for the sake of this when podcast. You get, when you get bigger. Yeah. And I'm Go just going to say, for the sake of this podcast, we have to assume certain things. Um, 
you know, we can't get into every little detail of, of, of how to get to that second truck, it, you know, about hiring right. There's things that we're going to have to assume. You're going to have to go through people uh, to get to that next level. You know, I love what you said. You know, you've got a good person when they start ripping stuff from you. But you know what? That's another podcast on how to hire correctly. But I'm going to say something, you know, I don't know if it's controversial or not, but here's what I think. The number one reason that owner operators complain that they can't find good people is because they don't have a good opportunity. All right. So when you're the owner operator who's been doing this for 10 or 12 years and you complain because you can't find good help and people are lazy, it's because you have a dead end opportunity. There's no growth in your company. You've been doing it for 10 years and it's just you and a rotating helper. So if you don't, if you can't get good help, I'm going to say, look at yourself and your opportunity. In what world does somebody just want to go and work for the same person as a helper for the next 10 or 20 years? You yeah. know, some of and us I, get lucky. And that, that, was me. that was me for a lot of years. You know, I was running yeah. out of my mom's garage. Uh, yeah, for, I'd help you on weekends in between stuff. You had people. You know, from I, I had you. a, I, then I built a barn and that barn had a dirt floor and, yeah. you know, and then I went from there to another place, but you know, I had a growth mentality and I did have a lot of, I had a lot of turnover. I had a lot of turnover, but then I had some guys that were good and that I did hire talent and there's clear as day difference. Matter of fact, the guys that are still part of our company today that were with me 20 years ago are yeah. still with the company and the guys that didn't have that, uh, the, the, the full package, the hunger, they didn't see the vision. They didn't, uh, whatever they, they were just clocking in. It, it was just a job to them. They're no longer with the company. So, um, you know, and I, I know a lot of people in business go through this, especially in the trades where, uh, we have, um, a hard time, uh, and, and one of the things that you just said is that, you know, we got to look, we got to look at ourselves because when we're the owner operator installer and we want to get to a different level in business, it really all, I'm responsible for that. Yep. And it all comes back to me. You know, yep. I can't point my finger at anybody else because we know the saying there's three pointing back at me. Am I willing to, am I willing to humble myself and look inside and, and realize what do I got to change, yep. you know, and if that's you, you know, it's worth it. The change yep. is worth it. I've had to go through it. <laughs> I had to change how I dealt with people. I had to de deal, change how I sold uh, work uh, and became a better, become a better sell. So just in general, you have to become a better version of yourself to make it attractive, not just uh, for people to work for you, but you know, that's going to make a better, better version of yourself is going to make a better version of your business. Better version of your business leads to getting a better people in your business to come work for you because it becomes more attractive opportunity to them. Yep. And uh, that's super important to people today. If they see that you're running out of the same old place for the last 10 years and it's a freaking mess and your truck is a mess and your operations a mess and they don't know where they're working today until they get in there and they're not treated properly and that, 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 that business is yeah. always going to have high turnover. It's never going to get bigger than that person. And, you know, it's vision. It really has stems down to, you know, your vision has got to be believable. And how is it believable? It's believable because of the actions that you take on a daily basis with not just putting money in your pocket, but pushing towards goals of change and ad adapting that business to be able to see the external results that employees see on a regular basis, that they see that you're not just all talk and, and, and that there's something here for them uh, long term. Yep. And, and that's what people are looking for. So, and you uh, hit it right on the head. You're, you did not start attracting good people until you started to have a bigger vision. Other than that, you just needed someone to hand you stuff. There was no real motivation for them to get great because it was the Ken show. And Ken didn't want to be a national company at that point or even think about two trucks. As soon as you had vision for more, I believe that's when you can start to attract um, people that are going to be better. So, yeah. 
And there's yeah. a saying, right? You be faithful with little and you'll be faithful. You get more. Uh, it's, it's giver's gain. It's all those things. It's, it's when you start thinking beyond yourself is when you have, and the key word with self-employed, it's all about self. It's all yeah. about I, me, and what I can do. And when you're stuck in that quadrant, um, especially in service-based business, we all start to get aged out. And I know a lot of guys in the services, all, all kinds of services, all over the country. And I know guys that have developed big businesses and opportunities for people and growth. And then I know guys that have stayed small and to take it all. And I'm telling you, to be in that place at 45, 50, 55, even 60-something years old. And I know guys in this business that are still installing gutters at 70 years, something years old. I mean, the most, all those guys that I know that are doing it themselves, you, you, I used to see them at the supply house. <laughs> they are not happy. They are grumpy old men. And I'm telling you, that's because it's, it's uh, it, you know, being out there climbing up and down ladders and into crawl spaces, lifting heavy stone and doing that kind of stuff. It just, you just can't, you can't be as productive and effective at it. And when your health and your age or whatever starts to happen, self-employed ends up being stuck. And when you're stuck, you're not happy. Um, So you got to have, you got to have that vision to be able to grow so that you can, you know, outlast, you know, the aging and outlast all those negative effects that start happening. Uh, as we get older and we've talked about it so many times um but you know your the whole goal is that your business can run without you anybody that has a business you know we all get hurt things happen life happens um shoot i hurt myself yesterday i tried to ride a unicycle like a freaking idiot i hop on a unicycle with flip-flops and i smashed my heel so bad when I fell off and the pedal came spinning around, I have this gigantic gash. I'm limping around. But as stupid as that is. Oh, are you drinking or something? Who would they ever no. think to get on a unicycle, let alone, you know, with sneakers on, uh, but with flip flops? Well, somebody gave us a unicycle and I thought, oh wow. my gosh, I'm going to try it. And I'm an idiot. I admit it. But guess what? You know, it didn't affect my income. Uh, I'm working today because this is my job is to get on and do fun, cool stuff. Trucks are going out. Franchisees are working. My income didn't change. Had I been the guy that does the gutters, I'm not installing gutters for days. Depend Like the way this feels today, I couldn't imagine doing anything um, like installing a gutter. So as, as, as stupid of an analogy that is, we've gotten our business to a place that I can go and try and ride a stupid unicycle and get hurt. And, and nothing really changes except for I, I'm an idiot and everyone knows it now. Um, so I think it's funny. Yeah, that's why it's so important. And that's why we're doing this podcast. And, you know, there is a little bit of this podcast that concerns us. You know, this is some of the stuff that we feel like, you know, this is why you buy a franchise. This is a little bit of the secret sauce, but we know what it takes to do it. This is why we believe in franchising. This is why um, we want this for people and, you know, we even want it for people in the gutter industry. It's a big place. We can't possibly do all the gutters, although we want to. It's a big place. And one thing that has given us the most pleasure is to see people succeed and get and grow and scale a business and get to the other side um, because it's like having a different life when you have a business that doesn't depend on you. So I kind of step off of that. And we're going to kind of talk um, through going from one to two to three. The hardest part about getting to a second truck is that your fear, it's fear of losing control and fear that everything's going to go wrong. And let me tell you, everything does go wrong. You're going to get a bad review. You're going to have guys that forgot to put a coil on their truck in the morning and drove an hour out to go, hey, boss, man, uh, we don't have a coil to do this job. That stuff's (laughs) gonna happen and it's the only it's just like your kids like you know and and they're gonna make mistakes they're gonna spill their milk they're gonna break the glass before they can drink it without dropping it it's going to happen it's part of life and 
yes, it sucks to get a bad review. And, and when it's true, some of us get bad reviews that are not true. But when they say, yeah, they came to the house three times and still didn't have the right ladder, it's embarrassing. But it's learning. Okay, what system didn't we have in place? What checklist do we need so that we don't go to the same house three different times with three different crews and still not have the right ladder? Um, so yes, that's one of the biggest things is the, the lack of control that you feel. Um, but if you kind of go back to what Ken was saying earlier, is we have to lay the foundation. We have to systematize. We have to be growing. And we have to have vision and hire good people. Yeah. And the easiest way to go from one truck to two trucks to three trucks to, and beyond is just to buy a franchise. Yep. And, <laughs> yeah. It's as simple right, as that. Podcast and, over. Oh, that's it. <laughs> and we're allowed to be a little self-serving because it is our podcast. So I guess we can, you know, do things like that. But yeah, it really does shortcut it. Um, if you've listened to any other podcasts, it does talk about how even people that worked for us for 10, 15 years still bought a franchise and knew our systems. But one thing that we say all the time, and Ken says it, business starts at a million. Business, real business starts at three trucks. And we believe it's a race to three trucks. And then everything gets easier. And people want to know, like, when they hear you've got payroll of $30,000 a week, or they hear crazy things like you've got 10 trucks, people that are in the business go, I don't want that headache. You know, my gosh, you know, that's just too much. And I'm like, well, what's too much about it? Well, you got to be, you got to be out of your mind. I'm like, I'm not. You know, sometimes my field supervisor's out of his mind. Sometimes our sales teams are out of their mind. But guess what? My life has gotten easier and our business has gotten better and the opportunity's gotten better the further I get away from wearing the hats uh, of, the, of the doing of the business. So let's go over some of the reasons why we think or why your business should be. And I'm going to say that, Ken, Ken hit, hit it earlier, you can have a business with three or 10 trucks. We've seen uh, big plumbing businesses go in and out of business in a few years because it was a mess. They had tons of trucks, tons of stuff, but they went out of business because like anything, you need a strong foundation. But Ken, in your opinion, what are some of the reasons? Why is it, it's really hard to get to three trucks, which I hope you kind of got the gist of it leading up to that. But why does it get easier after that? Well, you know, the more depth that you create in your business, uh, and the more people in leadership, it goes back to the five levels of leadership. John Maxwell talks about this. Uh, a couple other authors too, that uh, leadership authors, you know, you, you got to have the foundational qualities uh, to, to perform and then have people that want to take the lead. You know, the foundational qualities, we always talk about this is, is being hungry or passionate, uh, driven, uh, the, the, the other foundational qualities being teachable or honorable and, uh, you know, having people in your business that are people of integrity, that are honorable people, uh, and have character, you know, so if you're hiring those types of people with that kind of foundation to build on, naturally those people are going to strive to want more. And when we create an opportunity for people like that to thrive in an environment where we have created that as an owner, then they see the growth potential. And what happens is, is they want to, instead of being the guy that's on the job and saying, where's Ken? How long is he going to be taken for lunch? Why isn't he back here yet helping us hang these gutters? Must be nice to go out and do must, estimates for the rest of the nice afternoon. Must be nice to be the owner. Must be nice to have just bought a house or a, new, a car or whatever that they see, you know, of your lifestyle. Or it's the difference is, man, this is such a great company to work for. L look at this. We went from this shop to a much bigger shop. Things are happening. Things are moving. I want to be a part of this. You know, I want to be a field supervisor. Ken, listen, don't worry about this week's meeting. I'm going to take care of it. I know how to do it. I can get the agenda and the quote and the, all the stuff that the guys need and everything. You know, that's the difference of, of that. When you have people that want to take the lead, and then you hire more leadership. And by the time you get to the third truck, you should have four leaders. And out of those four leaders, you should have somebody that has the grit to be able to take charge and yeah. rip that responsibility from you. Uh, and you not have to wear that hat or tool belt anymore of having to do the things that 
a field supervisor would have to do. And what's cool is, is the more depth that you create in space that you create between you and that being back to wearing that tool belt, the easier business can get. And it does get. And that's, that's the pathway is the pathway is to creating enough opportunity for enough people to be able to get the vision. And then pretty soon it's as if you're not even there because the five levels of leadership are this is I got to get people to learn it, the foundational qualities to perform it, to lead it. And then I got to get those leaders developing leaders And then I have to get leaders who are developing leaders without me being there. And that's the fifth level of leadership. And that's what Ryan and I are teaching people is that we're teaching people, not just a, you know, the gutter business and how to install gutters. We're teaching people a certain way and strategy and philosophy, a culture of how to operate a business. And and this can be applied to any business out there to raise up leadership that can raise up leaders without you having to be there. Yep. Um, That's it. uh, And there's plenty of examples of that out there, you know, and if one person can do it and raise up leaders that are developing leaders within their organization, I can do it too. It's just a matter of me changing and adapting the way that I do business to a different mindset and adapting that mindset. Because if I can do it, if Ryan can do it, if other people in our franchise organization do it, other people that I know in business that have done it, they've done it in the remodeling business. <laughs> remodeling business has way more variables than the gutter business does. You know, there's so much more skills and things that they have to do. And I know people that are stay small and take it all in every industry. Um, I know guys in excavation that have done it. I know guys that have scaled it. I know how guys in painting that have 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 stayed in self-employed quadrant, but have scaled it to millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars and beyond. Um, and and, and the, the only difference is the mindset and how you think about it. And if I can learn from somebody or I can shortcut that learning process, because now I'm partnering up with somebody that's already done it and I got them on speed dial or I can text them or I can talk to other people in that network of people that have, done this and gone down the path, how much faster can I do it? Um, and that's how, that's how you make it easy. Uh, the hard way is doing it the way I did it and Ryan did it and <laughs> figuring it out all by ourselves. You know, we didn't even have Facebook or social media or we had no podcast. You know, anybody in our personal, we didn't have people in our personal lives the first 10, 15 years of this business that, uh, that could show us this kind of a way of doing things or this new thinking. Uh, It was all failing forward, but now we have people that we're teaching how to do it. They're doing it in less than a year. Yep. So basically the, 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 what we're talking about is why is it easy after three trucks? Why does business get easier? Because you finally have a foundation of a real business. Um, You actually have depth, like Ken said. So if you've got three trucks, you've got six, possibly seven guys And what's really neat is you typically have a salesperson, you have an admin and you've got your, your field and you're not like when you're on one truck, like when, when we were trying to go from one to two trucks, anytime somebody called out, Ken was back in the, he was right back in the mix. You, he was not removed far enough from his previous role. And that's the biggest reason to grow. And that's why we said earlier, if you're not going to go, if you don't have a plan to go to five, then don't go to two, because if you don't want to have to put the sales back hat back on or put the installer hat back on as you're growing, then you have to grow and you have to get past three. So that depth is really big. It's nice when you lose somebody and you don't have to go back to a previous role. When you've got three trucks and seven guys and somebody quits or you let them go, you don't have to hop back on a truck. You've got some depth there. Um, It's also directly tied to revenue. Uh, Hitting a million and beyond allows you the opportunity to be able to pay a good wage to somebody who has leadership qualities. You know, when you're hovering around 300,000, 400,000 every year, there's no way that you can long-term sustain somebody in a role in your company because there's no growth. And when there's no growth, people that have leadership ability are going to move on to a company that does and you'll lose them. But when you, when they see, growth over a year and you go from zero to a million 
uh, or two years, and then you're getting beyond that, and you're they're seeing three, four trucks. And I don't care what position it is; it could be the back office admin, it could be the the sales team. Uh, when they see that the sales are becoming bigger than them, uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting to see that, you know, this is a, I'm part of a company that's growing. This is what I, that's what people want. You know, people don't want to go and be employed with a business and maybe they come for an extra dollar or more, but it ain't going to last. Uh, you know, that's not going to last. It's, it's, it's short term gain. Uh, people are looking for uh, a, a career path and to be able to provide that, uh, is going to, uh, solidify, your uh your business in a way that you know it's 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 going to be less risky yep and less it goes back to that, that previous statement you. that i said if you don't have an opera like if you're an owner operator you really don't have a good opportunity for an employee and that's why you're having a hard time but when somebody comes in and they interview and you've got three trucks and you're talking about a fourth and a fifth now there's interest you're going to attract it's the law of attraction you now have a more attractive offer. And now that you're off of a truck, you actually get time to build your business. All those things that you wish were a little bit better getting to the third truck. You wish you had your training a little bit more dialed in. You get to now actually work on your business. We hear it said, and it's been so overused that I think we, you know, it's kind of like saying, you know, great service and quality. It means nothing anymore. Those two words mean nothing because everyone uses it so loosely. Just like people say, you need to work on your business, not in your business. And we're like, what in the world does that mean? Well, at three trucks, you get to finally start really working on your business. You're taking off some of those hats and able to start making it a great place to work, figuring out how to get health benefits or how to add more value for your clients. That's you know where it really gets fun. Um, something that just hit me right now is that you know the reason why our business, our, well, service is has been so, um, so there's such a problem. You know, I hear this all the time that, you know, got all these people, slap knuckles, whatever you want to call them that go out there and they're undercutting for cash. Well, who are those people? I'll tell you who they are. They're the people that worked for all of us owner installer operators that decided, you know what? I'm tired of working for this guy and giving him all the money that I'm working so hard for. I can get a truck and a machine and then I'll throw it in the back of a truck and I'll go out and do this business. And then you have another guy out there that is going after price and devaluing the worth of the gutter business or any industry for that matter. And that's it. We are our own worst enemy when we're self-employed because we have no opportunity for the people that work for us and they see that there's opportunity for them and that if this guy can have a truck and a machine and run it half-assed, man, I could go out there and, and, and take all this money and keep it myself and, yep. and do the same thing. And that's yeah. why we have such a, a, a flood of owner installer operators that are going out there and installing gutter for $3, $4 a foot, and they're making nothing. And they're devaluing the, the business. And, uh, you know, there's no reason, guys. If, if you, can't, you can't build a business in this business and not charge, and we should be. We should all be charging eight, nine, 10, 11, $12 a foot in every market across this country. There shouldn't be people that are out there selling gutter for $4, $5, even $6 a foot. You can't build a successful business on that. You can't create opportunity. And you can't create a career path on those kinds of numbers. It's just, nope. it's not there. Uh, you know, if we want to be able to have benefits and things and attract talent into the service-based in- industry, into construction in general, we got to raise our standards and we got to create opportunity. Those of us that have the ability to do so need to, we have to, uh, because these are all the things that are, are, uh, can make, uh, or break, uh, our, our living and our industry and, uh, and also being helped. It's also about helping other people right? And making a difference for them. You know, if I'm not creating opportunity to go into, you know, one, two, three, four trucks, what am I doing uh, for the economy? What am I doing for the people that work for me? It's all about self. And that's what self-employed stands for, in my opinion. Yep. Um, and we need to get out of that mentality and, and, and do the industry a favor and start creating opportunity for people. Um, so, you know, going to a million, back to that, 
is super important because business starts at a million because I can afford to pay somebody a seventy, eighty thousand dollar salary to run my field. You know, and you're going to hire. You're going to be able to afford to hire top talent. Not only that, I'm going to be able to offer them nice benefits and perks that that I can give them a company vehicle, I can give them health insurance or a 401k. You know, there's things that I can do because I'm able to hit that mark. And that's what that represents. And the reason why we say three trucks is because on average, a gutter truck should be able to do with a, a, a you know, decent at skill level uh, around 250 to 300,000. And, and that could be low depending on the skill level. I've seen guys do more than that. But that's what that represents in our industry. And if you can get to that point and build on it, it gets a lot easier because of not just the depth that you're creating, but, but because of the revenue is there. The revenue is there to be able to afford talent and to be yep. able to get leaders that I don't have to train from scratch. I can take them from another company maybe that they're not being appreciated in. Yep. Uh, and instead of them going out there and buying a truck and throwing a, tr a machine in a truck and – I have another guy competing on price out there that's trying to undercut me for cash. I have clear, I have a clear pathway to success where that guy's not even thinking about doing that. Yep. There's no way he could go out there and do that and undercut for cash and make as much money as he's making working for us. That's and great. that's also another uh, uh, reason why uh, you want to scale. It's creating opportunity to enable people to have a living wage that's, going to help them and their family to be able to buy their house, to build good credit, uh, to have insurance, to have 401k, to have a, a plan for retirement, to learn fiscal responsibility. Uh, you know, all those things we can teach these people. Um, so that's great. Anyway. Yeah. So that, that was awesome. So there, here's a nugget, you know, um, somebody told me this early on cause uh, we used to have the same, every struggle that you may have or whatever we've had and, and probably struggled with it longer than most of you. But they, somebody told me the advice, we, we needed an admin and it was like, how are we going to pay somebody five, six, 700 a week? Whatever it was, I forget the number. It's like, you know, it was hard enough to do what we were doing. And one, there's two things I'm going to tell you here. You need to charge now for the company you want to be tomorrow. So if I needed if I couldn't come up with $500 a week, how do I add a little bit more value to get the charge now that I have an admin? And it was just such a stupid, like, aha, like it might've been 25 cents a foot, whatever it was, it was like, oh, so I just got to add a little bit more value to get a little bit more money from the clients so that I can have an admin. Cause the clients tell me that they love when we answer the phone, but half the time no one's in the office and doesn't answer it. So it is important to them. So how do I fit it into the value? So that was one of the biggest things is, you know, yeah, you can't grow a business. Like Ken said, if you're charging three bucks a foot, yeah, you might be doing good as an owner operator wearing all the hats and you might be able to have some profit left over on that, but you're not gonna be able to scale and get to the next level. So that was a really big one for me is that you have to charge now um, for what you want to do. And again, at, if you're at three bucks a foot, going to four bucks a foot might be all the difference to, to, to get a better employee, then go into five to get that admin, um, and then six to get the salesperson. It's not always just going to $10 a foot overnight, because at the end of the day, if you're going to charge $10 a foot, you better have the value. You better be answering the phone, sending out emails, reminders, have a killer warranty, all the stuff that goes along with $10 a foot. It's not about charging it and offering the same crappy service. Um, so, and I think there's a big misconception there in our industry and in other industries is that you know other guys will start looking at it and saying oh those got companies ripping people off and and that could be the case with certain products that are out there um but without mentioning any names and we've seen cash grab things out there that are out there that come into the market and then leave the market uh as they get found out and products fail and on people's homes but that's not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about is charging uh, the, the, the right amount to be able to support a business that is profitable, but that can continue to grow and create opportunity for others and pay them uh, uh, the, the living wage that they need to make so that they can live, <laughs> you know, and, and not just live, but be able to not just pay, pay their bills as soon as the money comes in, it goes out, but be able to have 
a, a nice life to go out and be able to do things with their kids and be able to go go on vacation uh, or not just once a year but a couple times a year you, you create a create a business that is able to uh, sustain people in a way that they're happy and they're proud to work for you um, and you know that's what it takes um, is Yep. is uh, being able to, you know, a lot of times people think in this business and investment, I'm going to, you know, I'm buying physical things like tools and equipment and the next machine. And yeah, and that's part of it. Uh, but the bigger part of it is the investment in people. And as soon as we learn to treat people like assets instead of like objects, and, um, you know, that's going to... Uh, that's also going to make a huge difference in your growth. And another mindset shift that happened to me, and I, I believe this was the e-myth. I, I get it all mixed up. But somebody said, or I read it, people don't cost you money. They make you money. And that sounds so crazy when you're in the mix of it. But it's the most insanely true thing. It's the only reason that we've gotten where we are is because they do. When you hire somebody, they should make you money. Yes, they cost money at the same point. But, you know... It's just a, you know, take that for what it is. And I did want to backtrack on one thing um, before we go on. And I, I, I you know, we're, we're going to be wrapping it up soon. But we basically, a lot of the time, the biggest thing we have to do to get to three trucks and four and five is we have to delay gratification. It's as simple as that. Um, the, one of the biggest reasons I think Ken started his business is because he saw the lifestyle of the owner operator that that he he knew the guy had four wheelers and you know snowmobiles and a house upstate and you know it, it, you know I don't want to paint the picture that if you're an owner operator you're not making money you're you can make money it's not about just making money and having toys and a lot of times you see that and you know we see the gutter guys on the forums posting their side by sides and they're out in their boat and that's awesome and a business should be able to do that for you and one of our frustrations early on was when we were trying to grow the business is to see somebody, you know, driving around with a Range Rover, knowing they've got some four wheelers. I'm like, holy cow, like, you know, are we, are we doing the right thing? You know, it's like, man, we're, we're just paying, paying ourselves the bare minimum to get to that second and third truck. And again, I just want to say that with a caveat, it's because we didn't know what we were doing yet. We had vision. We figured out how to make money the whole time now for the franchisees. But it was a sacrifice for us to get over that hump. Um, so delaying your gratification is a big um, part for most. You know, it doesn't have to be. But for the most part, you're doing without because your vision is bigger than your immediate satisfaction. Or like, I have a business. I should have a, you know, a brand new car. I need a Mercedes. So a lot of these guys have all those things too. And they're, they're, they're still, you know, they're living from paycheck to paycheck. And, and that's a dangerous place to be. And I would say that most people are in that situation where they have a mortgage payment, they have a car payment, they have credit card payments, they have you know, the four-wheeler payment, whatever. They, they're, they're living high on life, but when you look at their balance sheet, it's really not pretty. And the danger there is when you fall off the ladder or you, you know, something tragic happens in your business. Uh, that's the danger because life happens. Yep. It all happens. It happens to all of us. The good, the bad, the ugly happens. Yep. And when it's, it's very high risk, you know, you could have everything in the world going right. And then all of a sudden, you know, your wife hands you a divorce papers or something, whatever life happens to people and when you're self-employed and the system is you, it's super risky. Yep. And I've seen a lot of guys, uh, there was one guy very successful in, in the business and success and he, he got cancer and he died. And his, his wife was left running everything. Uh, there's a lot of guys who've fallen, who've gotten hurt, maimed, you know, paralyzed, whatever, you know, and – you know, they're, they just didn't have their ducks in a row. There's a lot of things that can happen, but, but one of the biggest things that can happen too, is that you keep banging your head against the wall, wanting to get your time back. A lot, a lot of guys, you know, 
Your phone is ringing all the time when you're owner operator installer. I know this for a fact. I lived it for probably eight years and all those customers are all your bosses. True. And my phone never rings from our corporate location that I started in 1999. Never rings. And that's because there's leaders developing leaders without me being there. And I'm telling you, the lifestyle that I have now, not only the money is good, but my time is my own. I can go outside and play with my kids, jump in the pool in the middle of the day. I can go out and vacation as long as I want, go wherever I want. Uh, Ryan and his family just came down, and now he's going for two weeks with the other side of his family to the Jersey Shore. So, you know, we have so much flexibility uh, uh, that has been created. And not only that, our franchisees are experiencing the same thing, but they're experiencing it way faster. Yeah, uh, let's talk about we, that because typically in our industry, um, in any industry, we know landscapers, most service-based businesses are predominantly owner operators. You have the occasional big tree company and landscape company and plumbing. You have them. They are, they do exist painting, but I would venture to say, I wish I had statistics here, but I would guess 95 possibly higher in the trades and, and service-based industries are owner oper uh, owner operator. So, and uh, I was asked recently, well, how many typically get to three plus trucks? And I'm having a hard time finding many that just do one thing. You know, we see, you know, there's a couple guys out there that have gutter garage doors or window siding, roofing gutters that have multiple crews. But I would say most, most of the time uh, when you're doing a niche industry, people don't get past the one truck thing. However, let's transition in franchising and, and what we have seen even recently is how fast I can't even remember how long it took us, but let's just talk about how fast people are doing it now. So we've got, um, let's just take our last, our, our most recent franchise, uh, Josh Bowie out of Atlanta, Georgia. He just finished his first month in business. We just had his first review of his, uh, his, his first full month in business and he is ordering a second truck right now. He's already ordering his second truck only been installing gutters for a month. Insane. So what's awesome about Josh Bowie is that um, he, he, like Ryan said, he was a police officer. He retired from that. And then he was into, um, uh, I believe, uh, insurance adjuster. Um, and then he decided he, he was, it was a referral uh, to take a look at this. And, you know, here's a guy that has no experience in our industry at all. And he's going to his second truck and he's growing like crazy. Uh, another great, uh, um, a great example is, is uh, Luke Smith from Columbus, Georgia. He's another one. He, he worked for a lawn care company for like 10 or 11 years as a manager and always wanted to own his own business. He was recommended to us. And uh, he's in his first full year of business and he is at three trucks. Just yeah, he literally got a third truck almost to the day of his one-year anniversary. Right. So in within one year, not knowing anything about cutters, he's running three trucks. And, yeah. uh, and that's triple you know, the size of 95% of the guys that have been doing it their whole career in one year. Yeah, so it's incredible. Yeah. And what's also interesting, too, is that we have guys that have been in the business, too. We have three employees of ours that have gone on to be franchise owners that worked in the field, which is awesome. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of those guys has run six trucks uh, out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. He's you awesome. know, so, you know, and the other guys are having great success as well. Uh, we have another guy that was in the gutter business running his own truck as an owner and installer operator in a trailer uh, for 13 years. And, and a so very organized, and let, let's just clarify, a very organized pro profitable business. It wasn't a mess. It was, it was a really nice and neat. He did a really yeah. good job. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he just had rebranded and, and rebranded his logo and, and things on his truck. And then he came across this and he was thinking about scaling and 
he, was, he just started thinking, how long will it take me to figure this out? And this is his words, not mine. Um, and, and Nathan has been in our podcast in the past talking about this stuff. Um, but he's like, you know what? I can, I can partner with these guys and, uh, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to figure all out the, these things and how to get from one truck to the other. And, you know, there's a guy who knew he was, you know, he's 40 years old, 40 something years old. And it's, you know, my back is starting to hurt. And he actually had a back injury. He had a back injury and he knew that his time was limited out on the truck and he knew that he had to do something different. Um, and, and now, uh, he's got three trucks uh, in the San Antonio market, and he's crushing his goals this year. So, um, you know, it's it's pretty awesome to see that we have all these different guys that have been in the business that are having uh, tons of success, but then we also have guys that know nothing about the business that are having tons of success. And that really just... Uh, what I can say is the reason why is that they, the, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, but if you follow the system that's laid out in our franchise model, you're going to have success, and it's True. been proven. Yeah. So hopefully we covered a lot of the big reasons why you should go to a second, a third, a fifth truck, whether you're in just the home services industry, whether you join us in the future, or maybe we compete. Hopefully you all got something out of this today and you have some really big reasons to scale. And as always, feel free to reach out, private message us, email us. If you ever want to uh, learn more or even just pick our brain, um, we, we would love to uh, help you guys move forward. Yeah. And we can be reached through Instagram, uh, brothers, gutters, franchise.com. Uh, it can be reached through that. We can also uh, be reached through our uh, own um, uh, website, Phil Forms, uh, from brothersfranchise.com. And, uh, you know, feel free to reach out and we can uh, talk about the future. All right. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you implement at least one or two nuggets from this episode that will give you the confidence to grow. Subscribe to our podcast to stay updated and grow with the bros.